Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we talk about traffic pattern basics for the RC model airplane pilot. Let's get to it. The basic part of flying airplanes is the traffic pattern. This applies for both full-scale airplanes and RC model pilots. It's important that there is some definition of where pilots should be, downwind, base, final, and so forth so that they know where they are when tower calls them out, when they call their position, other people know where to look. While we don't fly precise traffic patterns for our RC model airplanes, there's still a flow. We still, still do fly downwind bases and finals. And I'd just like to talk about some procedures, what these procedures are, how we fly them, and how winds can affect us flying these patterns with our RC model airplanes. The source of this information is the FAA's Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. This is a very useful book for a wide range of aviation items. They've got good illustrations. The FAA has done a good, jo good job updating it. While it's geared towards full-scale aircraft, there are a lot of good information that will help the RC pilot if you want to have a copy of this book for your library. So what I'd like to do now is just go over a diagram of a normal traffic pattern so that we all are understanding the same terms of how we fly this uh, for full-scale aircraft and for our RC model airplanes. Our normal landing pattern, we assume the wind is down the runway. We always land into the wind, hence the term downwind, which we're going with the wind. We do, in this case, left turn, so it's a left-hand pattern to a base leg, 90 degrees to the runway, another 90 degree turn, and we're on final approach to the runway, crabbing as needed into the wind. And the one thing I want to point out for RC models is the flow. Uh, there's obviously no control tower at our, our model airports. And whether the flow is right to left or left to right can be important, especially if there's a light wind and people could be flying in either direction. Also, the sun angle may determine that you want to have a certain um, area of the field to fly on. So just make sure you understand the flow when you fly so you're not a conflict to other people that will be taking off and flying in the pattern may not be aware of where your model airplane is. What I'd like to discuss now is the concept of a crab and what a crab is for flying. Before I go onto the whiteboard and show it with um, uh, aer airplane diagrams, Think about if you're on a river, you're on one bank of a river, you want to go to the other bank of a river in a rowboat, and there's a fairly strong river current going, in this case, from left to right. If you point your rowboat directly to the other side of the river and just row, as you row, the current will take you down. So if you just point directly to the other side of the river, you will go land somewhere down river due to the current. What you do with a boat, what we'll do with airplanes, is we crab into the wind. Crab just simply means you turn slightly into the direction of the current for the river or the wind is coming from for an airplane. Your wings level, there's no turn involved. You're simply turning slightly into the wind. To continue with our rowboat crossing the river example, as you turn into the current, when you row with your heading slightly aligned to the left, as you row, the river moves you down here, but you're rowing this direction your track across the river will be straight across the, tr um, the river to the other side. You'll hit the point directly across from where you are. The same thing happens when we fly. So I'll be using the term crab a lot. Remember, it's just a wings level heading change into the wind such that your airplane or the shadow of your airplane on the ground, a way to think of it, describes a straight line um, a a along the ground. We typically use a crab and you'll see this in discussion on final approach where a crosswind may be trying to blow us one side or the other. We have to crab to maintain a straight final approach to the runway. This is a normal left hand base to final turn. We take a look at the wind sock so we understand how to adjust our base position for the wind if there's going to be a crosswind on final. And depending on the strength of the wind, it will determine your base position over the ground. With a strong wind, the number one arrow, it can be much closer to our touchdown point because we'll have a steeper final approach path. Less wind with number two to light wind number three, we can be further out to fly our normal stabilized approach. A stabilized approach is a very important part of landing safety. It just means a constant attitude um, and airspeed as we go down to our touchdown points. A good thing to practice to have a stabilized approach for better landings. Sometimes the ground can throw you off if you're a full-scale pilot. We don't have that problem with RC pilots, so we can always strive for a stabilized approach. 
In this case is by Blackburn Aircraft. It is a slow flyer and I'm going to show that by flying at roughly the airspeed we can almost hover over the ground for a landing. So here we are coming in for a landing directly into the wind. The airspeed is approximately the wind speed and you can see that my shadow over the ground is zero. I'm basically hovering in place to go down. Notice for strong crosswinds depending on your model I uh, oftentimes will land directly into the crosswind even if it is across the runway. This is a crab into the wind. You're just a wings level uh, turning. You're heading into the wind to have a straight ground track along the runway. This is just a perfect crab. If you don't crab on a landing, you see that the nose is pointed straight down the runway. The wind is coming from the right. The wind will blow us to the left. We have to crab to keep prevent that from happening. Another important part of the entire landing pattern, downwind, base, final, is the go around. It should always be planned for every landing that you have the possibility of a go-around. Maybe some person is on the runway, there's another aircraft on the runway, there's an accident, you are, the landing's just not turning out well, you might go off the end of the runway. It's super important to mentally be, a, be prepared to do a go-around at any time. Well, look at a diagram of a go-around for a full-scale aircraft. It can get complicated with full-scale aircraft because typically you're fairly slow, your flaps are down, your landing gear is down if you have retractable landing gear, and you have to be careful adding the power that you can do that in increments to maintain control of the aircraft as you go around. For RC model aircraft, we typically have so much power, it's not that much of an issue. We add power and we're on the go going around. Uh, gear and flaps is necessary for a model airplane. But the key thing about the go around is mentally be prepared to do it. It catches people by surprise because you don't um, do it that often. But if there's a reason not to land for safety, just go around and set up the other landing. And part of that is you can easily practice go arounds at any time. If you just have a normal landing, just call out yourself a go around, go around, and you, you can practice doing that. So let's talk a little bit now about how wind can affect an RC pilot in the traffic pattern. So as you can see, we have spared no expense with our visual aids. This is just a diagram to show wind in the traffic pattern. This will be the runway right here. This is a fence line, so the flyers are back here. This will be part of our undershooting and overshooting wind discussion, and this is the wind right here. So if we have a wind straight down the runway, as we talked about with the um, uh, when you're flying your base position, you want to position your base for the wind. If it's a calm wind condition, you can turn the normal base position to fly here to your final. If there's a very strong wind, you want to position your base a little bit closer in uh, to fly your normal pattern. In this case, though, we're going to talk about the crab. So if we do our base and we do our turn to final, because the wind is right down the runway, we can be aligned right with the runway and everything works out fine to fly a straight in approach into a landing. So let's talk just a little bit about a crab with a crosswind. So here is the wind going across the runway. As we do our base to final turn, what's going to happen is the wind wants to blow us this way, in this case towards the fence line where people may be standing. So if we do our normal turn at base, we line up on final, we're going to be blown into the fence line. This can happen very easily. What you have to realize is the minute you see it's a crosswind in this direction across the runway, this is what we call an overshooting wind. So if you turn at your normal base position, you will overshoot final and go like this. What we want to do is understand it's an overshooting wind, and we start our base to final turn not in our normal place, a little bit sooner. So as the wind blows us over, we are lined up right on final, and we can transition immediately to the crab uh, for that approach. By the same token, if the wind is the other direction, this is an undershooting wind. So if we turn at the normal position on base to final, we will be above the runway. What we want to do is continue our turn a little bit further, knowing that the wind will blow us onto the final, then the crab to the final approach. So let's talk a little bit about crabbing onto final. In this case, the wind is in this direction blowing bottom to top. If we line up straight with the runway, the wind is going to blow, it, uh, blow us such that our ground track is diagonal. It will not be straight down the runway. It will be up the runway like this. What we have to do is understand the wind is here and wings level, we just turn slightly into the wind. What will happen with this crabbed 
approach. We will not be aligned to the runway off a little bit, but as we, the airplane flies this way, the wind will blow it this way, we will track straight down the runway, or in our case, we'll track straight down on final approach to maintain a straight final approach to go ahead and land. With a crosswind, for full-scale aircraft, there are several different techniques about how to land in a crosswind, wing low, slip, crab, etc. For RC models, the absolute easiest way to do is to simply land in the crab. We're slow enough and the controls are such, it works out just fine. Land in the crab so you're on the center line. Then when you're on the ground, you can work to roll out straight. But the key thing is the crab on final, in this case to the left, to track it straight, land in the crab in the crosswind, and you will be okay. Another important point on landing is where on the runway do you want to land? With regular runways, there's very detailed information about aim points, runway markings, because you could be flying in the weather, you break out, you need to know where you are on an unfamiliar runway. For RC models, the best thing to do is to just divide the runway into thirds. It is absolutely a good objective anywhere you fly to land on the first third of the runway. That is a just a good airmanship, good habit pattern. And if it looks like you're gonna land in the second half of the runway, just go ahead go around and set up the landing again to try to touch down on the first third of the runway. So we've talked about crosswinds of the landing pattern. The other thing to think about is turbulence and wind gusts. What do you do if it's a wind gusts and it's turbulence? The answer is it really depends on you, your personal preferences, and the airplane that you're flying. With our RC model airplanes, there's a wide range of different abilities to handle gusty uh, wind conditions. The heavier models tend to do better but it'll be up to you. What I try to do if it is gusty is to make sure I have sufficient power that if there is a downdraft, I can um, keep it up, the airplane up. And also you wanna make sure you have enough control authority to work through the bumps, uh, the bumps in the air. Landings are always gonna be a little bit different, difficult in gusty conditions. The main thing is just set personal limits. And if it appears to be too windy to fly, the best decision may be to not fly until the winds calm down. There's some landing exercises we can do to build your proficiency in landing. And the first one is a 90 degree power off approach. Let's look at a diagram for that. As a good starting exercise, we simply close the throttle on our base leg to final and just practice uh, turning into the runway, setting up our approach path and hitting our touchdown point. Uh, flaps can help with this if you're a little bit high. And if you're not, you, without flaps, you just have to adjust the base position. We can take that a step further and do a 180 degrees power off approach. We'll take a look at a diagram for that. It's a more advanced exercise, but the same um, idea. We're on downwind leg. We just close the throttle, ex um, establish a normal glide speed. And what will happen is where we turn for the base leg will determine how high we are on final. If you uh, turn it a little bit late and you're low, simply go around and set it up again. Finally, you can do 360 degrees power off approaches. And this is a more advanced uh, maneuver. You come upwind, you're flying directly over your landing point, pull the throttle to idle, and just practice turning for your normal glide speed to a downwind and base leg to have a normal stabilized approach to your touchdown point. Again, if things don't look good, go around and set it up again. And there's always the option to do a spiral to a landing. The spiral to a landings were pretty important when we had our gas-powered engines. Uh, the motor could quit at any time. Not so much of an issue with the electric power, but it's a good exercise in just airmanship to just pick a point where you might be and just say, okay, I'm gonna simulate that I've lost an engine, pull it back to idle and see how you do spiraling down, entering a key position, downwind base final to go ahead and land the aircraft in a no power situation. This was a much more common thing to practice back when we were flying gas engines because your motor could quit at any time. You just had to practice any time you uh, were dead stick, no engine uh, running, could you establish a landing point from wherever you are. It's still a good thing to do with electric models. Just pick a point, pull the throttle to idle, and see if you can make it back to the field. Probably the most common error that we have with our RC models is being low, a low on your approach. You don't want to ever be low in your approach. We've talked earlier about stabilized approaches at the correct approach angle. 
If you do feel that you're going to be low in the approach, simply add power so that if you are going to be low, you'll level off slightly, intercept your normal glide path, then continue a stabilized approach to landing. But we just want to avoid low drug in approaches. The other error is going to be too high an approach. This can easily happen if you just misjudge your base to final turn, or you might not have anticipated this little bit of a tailwind. You're just high on the landing. There's no way you're going to land in the first third of the runway, maybe not even the first half. The best thing to do on something like that, it always leads to problems when you try to salvage an approach, go around, set it up, figure out what you did wrong in that one, being too fast, too high, and come in for a normal landing. The other thing that can be surprising with RC models is we tend to fly our patterns one way, say with left-hand turns. We get very comfortable left-hand turns. We're just uh, happy doing left-hand turns on the pattern. Then all of a sudden we have to fly a right-hand turn due to wind or any other reason, sun angle and so forth. It's always good, and you can do this in the simulator. You can do it at the RC field. Discipline yourself to practice right-hand patterns as well as left-hand patterns so you're comfortable flying both directions. So thank you for joining me in this video. The traffic patterns are a standard part of flying. It's good to know the definitions of the patterns, how wind affects it, how to do a crab, and how to um, fly your airplane in crosswind conditions.